If you are a new player to Honkai Star Rail or perhaps you are a returning player after playing the beta test in the past of Honkai Star Rail, then this video is definitely for you as I'll be covering the absolute basics to get you started on your journey. First things first, Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based RPG gacha game. What this means is very similar to games if you have played in the past, for example, Final Fantasy's turn-based style of gameplay, or even the likes of the more recent The Legend of Heroes series ones. It's a strategy game at its core, and this short guide will give you the absolute basics to get you started through Honkai Star Rail. Now I'm not going to bore you with numbers, mathematics and stuff, I'm just going to give you a very broad big picture for you to get a refreshing view into the whole world of Honkai Star Rail to get you started. You can check out my other videos if you are more interested in perhaps more in-depth guides. So let's talk big picture right now. You form a team of 4 characters basically in your squad and you mix and match your composition based on the challenge. For example, are you facing an elemental challenge where all the enemies are of a certain type? Or perhaps you are fighting a single target boss with a lot of HP, or maybe two bosses with a lot of HP each, and etc. Characters can differ in three ways. First is based on their rarity, whether they are 5 star, 4 stars, like most gacha games, and also classes in terms of they have 7 different classes and finally they also differ in terms of the element that they have. Pretty basic so far, hope I didn't lose you yet. But anyway, now let's talk about the 7 different classes in Honkai Star Rail. So the best way to think about the 7 classes and not get confused with all the wording is just simply think of it in 3 categories. Your damage dealing DPSs, your supports that buff and debuff, and the sustain category which heals and tanks you up. Let's start with the easy ones shall we? Sustain is abundance in terms of healing, preservation in terms of tanking. Harmony is buffers and nihility is debuffers, broadly speaking and general classifications for you guys to know. And most of you might be most interested in the damage dealing category and there are three types. The first type is your single target damage dealer which is the hunt class. The AOE damage dealers or area of effect hitting multiple enemies is called erudition in Honkai Star Rail. And lastly, the destruction is like a mix between Han and Erudition, but it depends on certain characters. What it really means is it's an enhanced DPS state, where they have some sort of skill to buff their normal attack, such that they can maybe do more damage or an area of effect damage, usually at the expense of either speed, health or some other stat line that they have as well. And for those of you who are new to turn-based RPGs or perhaps coming from Genshin where you're not really used to playing around healers and tanks, in Honkai Star Rail this is a totally different story and healers and tanks are very important because a lot of the difficulty comes because perhaps you're under level, under gear and you want to clear content quicker to get to the battle loop and that is where your healers and tanks will really come in to help you bridge and mitigate the differences so that you can progress faster than other players who just rely on purely like triple DPS team and stuff like that. But anyway, we'll go more in depth in more character team com videos which I'll put out later on. But now, let's jump to the next section which is really elements. So in terms of elements, most of these characters will do damage in their elemental typing. So far to date, there are no characters that have hybrid damage. For example, you can do both physical and fire in the same character. Does not apply. It really follows more of like the Honkai Impact 3 kind of system in terms of elements. So for those of you who came from there, this will feel more or less familiar to you. But how uh, elements matter in Honkai Star Rail is enemies generally will have a certain element below their bar. For example, if you see these monsters here, they are weak to particular elements and if you attack the enemy with that particular type of element, it actually will chunk down their shield and cause them to enter a break or vulnerable state after taking a particular amount of damage in their respective weakness elements. And in terms of rarities, other than the fact that 5 stars are much more difficult to obtain in terms of gacha compared to 4 star characters, there's also a significantly higher stat. Uh, scaling for 5 star characters versus 4 star characters. In my opinion, that's the main downside of 4 stars, uh, 4 star damage dealers in particular, because they can't really output the same amount of damage that a 5 star has with that monstrous 5 star stats that they have as well. So that's something useful to take note, but that doesn't mean that 4 star DPSs are totally no use. I have actually done a 4 star DPS comparison, which I actually talk a lot more about this in there. I'll link it in the video card above. For those of you who are interested, you can check it out. So with all these differences in all the characters, the next question that comes is how do we put together them in a proper functioning team? I have right here a very basic template that you can use for your initial journey of your Honkai Star Rail and that is really following a template of a single target plus uh, AOE damage dealer. Ideally you want them in differing elements so you can break more weaknesses. Your third and fourth slot are generally going to be used for supports or sustain classes. So it's up to you whether you want two healers, uh, uh, one healer one tank or maybe even a healer and a support debuffer or buffer class. 
And my recommendation for an absolute free to play with no access to gacha, this is the 4 characters I would generally start off with, especially since physical MC can transition over on to fire MC later on to become more of a supportive sustain unit as well. Every character has 3 actions that they can take. They can either normal attack or use a skill or their ultimate ability. There are a bit of differences between the three and let's talk about them. The normal attack basically is just a simple attack that they have and what this normal attack does is it gains skill gauges or you can have this action gauge that you see right here, it will gain charges. In order to use a skill, you need to use up one of these charges. So as you can see, you need to balance in your team roster. Some are going to normal attack, some are going to use skill to maintain the differences. And last but not least, we have the ultimate ability which doesn't care about turn order or the action gauge. You can use the ultimate ability at any point of time in the battle and how it does is once you press the ultimate, you will actually send your character up to be the next in line to attack after the active character finishes their turn as well. Pressing multiple of these buttons all at once will just send them up in the sequence that you press the ultimate. <laughs> And this is a pretty good time to introduce you to stats and damage. Characters generally skill off with one of three things, either attack, defense or HP. This could be the amount of damage they are dishing out, the amount of damage they mitigate in terms of the shield or amount that they heal. And when a character's HP drops to zero, they are unable to act for the remainder of the match. Damage can be crit or non-critical based on the crit rate chance as well as the critical damage multiplier stat. And being a turn-based game, speed is the very large determining factor in who goes when and how often. Of course, energy restoration is a pseudo uh, uh, bypass to this because your ultimate allows you to bypass the turn order quite quickly. So higher rest energy restoration does in some sense give you a higher acting power as well. The other stats in the game are healing effectiveness and effect hit rate which is the ability to land debuffs and of course healing effectiveness is healing. So now let's talk about a fun thing, 3 ways that characters can gain power and become stronger. And the first way is of course building the characters themselves, in terms of leveling them up or even ascending them. Characters in Honkai Star Rail gain a lot of their damage and stat from leveling, so I highly recommend you do so. And once you hit certain levels, you will actually have ascension requirements where you have to farm specific materials to get them past that particular level, similar to games like Genshin Impact if you are used to it as well. And the next way to improve a character's utility and damage is of course unlocking their tracers which gives a character like certain additional stats based on which node that you select in the tree to unlock and some of them actually give quite a significant passive and additional uh, damage to your skills as well and you should invest in characters that you like to play and are playing very often their tracers and of course to build your characters up, you can also have multiple copies of the same character. In this case, we call them Eidolons in Honkai Star Rail. So by getting multiple copies, you unlock certain special abilities in a unit as well. But anyway, the next way that characters can gain power is through relics. In Honkai Star Rail, it's called relics. In other games, it might be called artifacts, gear, or, or so on and so forth. But it really follows the same thing. This is where frustration is going to be for most players where you're trying to roll for that perfect substat of maximum crit damage and stuff like that. So in this game, in Honkai Star Rail, there are 6 relic slots per character. 3 of them are fixed at main stats like flat HP, flat attack, flat defense. And the other 3 are your varying stats which can be like speed, crit damage, energy restoration, HP percentage, uh, lightning damage bonus, and so on and so forth. Generally speaking, relics come with 2 piece, 4 piece and 5 piece set bonuses. What this means if you use multiple relics of the same set that they are, they will convey additional bonuses based on the stats that they give or their set bonuses that they give as well. There's no fixed rule on like the best combination to use in all of the game, but generally speaking, most players would opt for a 2 piece and a 4 piece combination to make up 6, or if you are really farming a domain for a really long time, you can go for a straightforward 5 piece set bonus and leave your last relic as a flexible rally or some of you who are just intent on playing many many different characters and don't want to spend too much time in a single domain you can run a 2 2 2 uh, piece just to get that, that the, the two piece bonuses of multiple sets all works fine as well no hard and fast rule at this point in the early game for a beginner especially and the last way characters can gain power is through light cones very similar to genshin impact's weapon system where there are 3 star, 4 star and 5 star variations all with different effects on them respectively 
and 5 star light cones for example have much higher stat scaling than their lower rarity counterparts. But often the lower rarity light cones can also have quite tremendous value. I'll highlight a few in another video later on. But one thing that you need to know is that light cones are class specific. Which means that a particular class like harmony class can only use harmony light cones to get the effect. With all this information in mind, you're ready to take the next step. Consider clicking this video right here where we talk about tier list and resource allocation in terms of who you should actually consider building and who you shouldn't. Thank you so much for watching and leave a like and subscribe for more of such future content. It's EOD Gamer here, signing off.